Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. All right, and welcome. My name is Laura Sturm. And I'm Josh Rohr. This is episode 21 One. 21 of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast. We are joined today by Mr. Mark Freeman. Uh, Mark started uh, powerlifting in 2005, mostly just bench press. First few meets were USPF meets done by Buddy Duke, uh, lifted in a bunch of different feds until uh, he says until I started putting on quality meets, but uh, he was a big part of that. Mark was always spotting and loading and volunteering, doing all that stuff, which he didn't, he's not going to mention. So I'll mention that um, <laughs> probably one of the hardest working guys behind the scenes um, with all the meets that we put on. Um, he uh, was also a meet director. He did the 2014 USA powerlifting Georgia winter classic, even though uh, yeah. the t-shirt said, said something different. Yeah. Yeah. One time meet director. Never again, too much work, but uh, the meet was in January and I got t-shirts done in December. And when they sent the proof, I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind. It said 2013, but the meet was actually in 2014. So all the shirts were wrong, but me, other than that, the meet went on without a hitch. Yeah. And our, our buddy, Matt Buttermer, I believe was the uh, poster boy for he that was. shirt, right? Matt Buttermer was on the uh, front of the shirt. Yep. I think I had that shirt and I never noticed that. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I was, <laughs> last week we talked about, I never got the American Open shirt, but I actually never got one of those shirts either. I think that's the two I'll, meets that I've never got. I might got have one. I'll send you. Awesome. I would love it. A um, couple other things. Uh, obviously, Mark, you can talk for yourself here, but it, it's more fun for me to brag about you. Um, he, uh, as a lifter, learned a lot from Sherman Ledford, a guy that owns Quest Nutrition, um, Steve Goggins, Matt Christie. Uh, his best lifts, 733. Hey, and Thank me, you. yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, I wasn't going to say that. Um, uh, the His best lifts in a meet are 733 squat, 535 bench, and a 606 deadlift. He was the runner-up at the Arnold in 2015, best lifter at the American Open in 2012. And I think the biggest star on this resume is the co-founder of the UGA powerlifting team. Yep. Um, that's something a lot of people uh, don't know, and I think it's important to mention. And you coached at what four collegiate nationals? Four, uh, yeah. And then we had uh, maybe three re regional meets that Rob Keller would run down in Florida that we would go to, and uh, we would we would go to all the state meets and, and regional meets too. Yeah. Uh, what do you think's better, raw or equipped? <laughs> equipped. <laughs> I like them both. Uh, I'm a big fan of both. I uh, I still pay attention to all the raw all the the raw guys now are doing what the equipped guys in 2011 were doing. Yeah. It's, know, it's actually, it it's, so it's really crazy. It's uh, I like both. Um, I preferred equipped, you know, when I was lifting, but um, I've always been a fan of both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously Laura and I are both primarily equipped and, and I, I know your true feelings. That's why yeah. I asked that question. That was a good, well, politically, I mean, that was a good politically I, I like correct answer, equipped, but I'm a fan of both. Yeah. Some of these raw guys in, in 2020 is just like, mind-boggling yeah there's some stuff that they're doing that doesn't it doesn't it's still hard to you, you see it happen and it's still hard to fathom what's yeah. actually happening <laughs> yeah crazy well that's what i remember about mark going to meet he'd always have um a team of girls there that would be in equipped yep and, yeah uh, i've tried to push them okay. um you know most of them would do a meet or two and then and then never do a meet again but um we always had that focus just because when we were doing the collegiate stuff, collegiates was still equipped. So we were trying to really kind of push them towards that. So we could have a, you know, a quality team at collegiates. Yeah. Yeah. That I still think collegiates is the best meet we have. It's just so much atmosphere wise and just the raw adrenaline of all the crowd and everybody that's so bought into what's happening. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's insane. Like I didn't know how insane it would be until I was there that year that you put it on, Josh. Yeah. That was a loud, crazy meet. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, awesome. gets, it gets pretty uh, pretty wild. Uh, as far as I know, there wasn't any post-meet incidents, but when I was in college, there was always something that happened that was 
people knew about, but it was kind of one of those things like, don't ever talk about that publicly again. <laughs> like after well, the fact, like, a story, Josh. like, uh, <laughs> well, all right, I'll tell a story. <laughs> all right. I don't know if we, I don't know if we already talked about this or not. This is actually an uncle Jeremy story a little bit. Um, but we went to, this would have been my senior year, uh, 2006 collegiate nationals in Miami. Um, after the meet, a bunch of us went out to South beach and, um, we had one guy. So we went to this dance club. It was me, Jeremy Hartman, and a couple, couple other lifters from each of our teams. And we went to this dance club and there was one guy with us that was only 18. Um, so he couldn't get in cause you had to be 21 to get in. And we were in there for probably two hours or whatever. And we come out and the guys, the guy's just like sitting on the curb with his head down, like real, just kind of, you could tell he was just, we just assumed he was just having a really, it was just really irritated that he couldn't go in. But we're like, all right, dude, you ready to go? He's like, man, he's like, you're not going to believe this. He's like, I fly home tomorrow and I don't have my ID. Like, what do you mean you don't have your ID? And he just sat there for a second. He's like, a hooker stole my wallet about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> it has my ID and all my money in it. So I don't know how I'm going to fly home tomorrow. How so, did he get home? Did he, did I, I honestly, I don't know. I never followed up with him. I don't know. But it was that was one of Jeremy's guys. But that's still one of the mm -hmm. most, I don't know, one of the stories that, that I was personally a part of. I mean, there's a bunch of others that were way worse, I think, that I was, I was a witness to, but not really kind of that directly involved um so anyway that was that's one of my favorites story time with josh roar story time with josh roar yeah our new segment i need to ask jeremy about that because i'm sure he knows what happened because it was one of his guys but i just i guess never never thought about it again um oh well <laughs> memories oh. <laughs> oh man uh hey why don't you tell the story about your uh I think it was 2010 state the first state meet you did in Dalton and uh it was at that like con fitness convention or something and next to us was the uh the pole dancing competition I'm actually wearing the shirt from that meet there you go uh it was 2011 2011 yeah there so we did the first yeah the first state meet that I ran was part of a expo up in Dalton Georgia and when we set everything up like I knew the, uh, the guy that was running the expo real well. And he kind of asked me, you know, Hey, does this layout look okay? I'm like, yeah, it should be fine. Um, and you know, right next to our venue was the pole, like pole fitness, I think is what it was called, but basically it was just a bunch of people pole dancing. So I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not a problem. But what I didn't think about was how we configured our event. We basically had the platform. So the, as you're the, so we had the crowd basically, I guess, kind of, adjacent to the pole fitness but when you're the lifter you're basically staring directly at the pole <laughs> and it didn't I just didn't see so th those are the little the little things that you kind of pick up on from experience but that was my first meet I'm like eh, it doesn't matter but I, I don't know how many people commented on that like after the or during and after the fact like hey why'd you set it up so like as we're getting ready to squat we're looking at you know and it was it was guys and girls doing the pole fitness and, <laughs> and there was yeah i don't remember who it was but he's like dude why'd you set us up so i'm like staring at a guy doing pole dancing as i'm doing my heavy squat I'm like well that's amazing hindsight's 2020 probably not the best idea that's amazing that takes so much athleticism though yeah <laughs> the pole dancing yeah but, uh, yeah anyway let's that's that's another that's a story for another time if we to do any more talking about that um, but let's mark, let's, were you one of those lifters? I was a lifter. I wasn't doing pole dancing. Well, I think you were, pole dancing, <laughs> but were you setting up for your heaviest squat looking at a, a dude? I don't remember pole it that dancing. way. They were, I, I thought the, the platform was facing the powerlifting crowd and the, the pole dancers were like, it was, yeah, it was, it, it was, but when you enter, but okay. So oh, when you came in through, your, so, so the you, tunnel, the yeah. tunnel was aimed directly at the pole I fitness know. But as you're squatting, you still see like you still see the pole like very, very clearly in your peripherals. No, um, only thing I remember from that meet that was my first um, experience getting Dave Ricks's wife as a judge. 
that one. So that's Julia Ricks. That's basically all I remember from that one. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, we kind of, we kind of did all the bells and whistles for that one. Weird red lights. Yeah. I wasn't, I I don't know. I don't remember the judging, but I just remember um, the guy that put on the expo, he had his couple sirens and uh, strobe lights and he put them up on top of the, up on top of the um, staging, like the backdrop. And every time there was an American record attempt, he would flip the switch and the strobe lights and sirens would go off, which sounds really cool. But the siren was like, (laughs) (laughs) so it sounded ridiculous, Um, but it was a cool concept, but it just, it was almost like one of those, like if you're driving like a muscle car or something, and it just has like one of them really high pitched horns, it just like makes it, it takes a little off. Yeah, it was kind of one of those oh. things. Sounds cool, but it just, uh, yeah. Anyway, any um, smoke with that one? Yeah, we had we had the fog. So that was the first meet we did, first and only meet that we did fog machines in the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess the stuff that you use in the fog machines like, can cause people's asthma to flare up. Apparently, <laughs> also, also, also it was found, such a learning experience, wasn't it? Yeah, also found that out the hard way, I guess. So. And yet you went on to do many more meets as a meet director. Yeah. Which is pretty um, commendable. Yeah, that, that, that could have been the, the first and last. Um, but just kind of cut out some of the extra things for show and uh, kind of just focused on the things that really matter. Did you have a payoff on those meets? On that uh, I did. did. I think wow. your every... first meet. Yeah, um, I think I, I lost money on that meet, but every meet. Well, oh, man, pretty much every meet. Um, I remember something that was uh, super impressive to me was uh, Tony Walton. You guys know Tony; he's you know big Georgia lifter. But I think he got second. I think he lost to Charlie Connor in the raw on Saturday. Well, lost, but came in second place. Got money there. The next day came back and won the equipped money the next day. Yeah, I think I think I've written more checks to Tony than anybody else in Georgia. He, <laughs> he takes a lot of my money. Yeah. Oh man. Not fair. Not right. Yeah. No, he earns it though. I mean he, oh, works, well, he yeah. works hard. Oh yeah. So I'm I'm happy to write checks to uh to people that put in the time and, and take it seriously like that. Mark, have you won Josh Roy's money? Uh, I have, I think, um, can't remember. I, I had to go do some, some back research. I think I may have won money at, uh, the downtown Atlanta, one of the downtown Atlanta meets or something. And I think I beat you actually. Mm-hmm. I think I edged you out on a third deadlift, which, uh, is very rare for me. You know, third, de- <laughs> I've probably missed more third deadlifts than, than, anybody in the state of Georgia, but, um, I think I won money there and I think I won money maybe at a, a bench only thing you did too, Josh, like another expo that was somewhere. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to remember or something. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot. It's, it's all starting to blur together yeah. at this point. Um, which is not good. Maybe that, maybe there's another problem. Maybe, yeah. I, maybe I have other issues. Yeah, I'm getting old. Yeah, I did money. I did win money, and I had to go find this. But oh, that's oh epic. yeah, you got the yes. Arnold, the Arnold I check. I had to dig it out of the garage, but brought, that's brought epic from from uh, Ohio a few years so ago. Do you take that to the bank? No. no. <laughs> Funny story. Like I didn't even have anywhere on the plane to put it, so they put it on like where you put your, uh, there's like a suit closet in every plane. So they put it in there for me. You gotta be, I wonder how many people get on there with stuff like that from the Arnold. I don't like, know. like who are these people with these damn <laughs> giant checks? checks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice, nice. I, that was like perfect storm. I had probably like did the best I had ever done. And there was three or four people in my class that like bombed out and had terrible meets. Like Matt Christie had a terrible meet. Um, some Russian guy bombed out on squat and uh, somebody else bombed out. And then 
a Swedish dude named Joe Kim Laxo or Lasco uh, beat me in the two twenties. So kind of it's like the pinnacle of my powerlifting career. Second place at the Arnold. I mean, that's a big deal. Woo-hoo. Oh yeah, that's no joke. That I'm going to go off on a tangent here. That's one thing that just pisses me off. Still, is people go do these obscure meets and obscure federations and and you know brag about they won their weight class or they're a world champion or they're a national champion bullshit i call bullshit on all that like i I know i've gone on this rant multiple times but every time you say something like that where you're like oh i got second though i'm like second's freaking good man like that's because you competed competed against a bunch of people like and a bunch of people that are legit not just a bunch of random nobodies yeah so man i think it's i think it's a big deal too many people get caught up in that like I think, I mean, that's awesome. So anyway, I'll end my rant short. That was our segment that we do too, Josh Roar's rants. Yeah. Josh Roar's rants. Yes. Well, that's a mini rant. We won't, we won't go any further. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go right into our powerlifting situation. Yeah. Keep us on, on task. Paul. All right. Hashtag powerlifting situation. So if you're down by 10 kilos and you're going into your last deadlift, well, you're not. You're watching a meet. Sorry, reading this wrong. All right, so you're watching a meet. <laughs> and down by 10 kilos, all the competitors are kind of neck and neck. So you're going to bet your life savings. Uh, I'm not going to, but say you did. On a lifter making their last deadlift, winning the meet, who is it you're going to bet on? Mark. I put Kim Walford. I mean, she's she's been kind of the, the queen of the deadlift here the last – I don't know, probably 10 years and um, maybe there's somebody that can beat her, but that's who I'd pick. Nice. Josh. I, you know what? I want Laura to go next because oh. I, yeah, I know I'm, I'm throwing a curveball here. All I, right. I want to hear Laura's before I, before I make my argument in my case. Oh, well, I would never bet my life savings. So yeah. I mean, that'd be stupid, play. but I mean, that's just not me, but um, for controversy we and intrigue, we got to make it spicy. You know, um, Jennifer Thompson has a great bench press, but she also has a pretty stout deadlift. And she, yeah, she um, she's a meat lifter. She got outpulled already by the, I um, can't remember the other girl. She's already been beat. Yeah. Well, you know, but she's JT. Come on. Don't say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she comes back and she comes back. She keeps coming back. But she got injured, so I don't know where she's at right now with things. But you know, she's a meat lifter. She pulls things and and does things that, eh, you know, I don't I don't think I could pull out of my ass the way she. Oh wait, that sounds wrong. Pulling things out of her ass. <laughs> um, but she's a meat lifter, and uh, she's one of my favorite lifters to watch. And such a humble person. And uh, yes, it's my choice. But you also mentioned um, a couple local lifters that our epic last, you know, pulling things out, Doc and Tony, amazing deadlifters. Doc always walks up like a robot. It always slays me just to watch him and how methodically he's approaching the bar. And just every deadlift looks exactly the same. Everything he does looks exactly the same. And and Tony with that, that setup, raised, you know, up in the air and then coming down and boy, he just, Tony was the uh, right deadlift. Tony was the picture for the IPF, like on their website and their magazine for like a year or two. Yeah, because he's jacked. He's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. jacked. I think it was uh, the Norway Worlds that he got to go to, and uh, I forget, I forget what he pulled, but he was the he was like the picture on the website for uh, it was more than a year. Nice. One other reason I think JT should be in the deadlifter, she's only missed two deadlifts since 2015 for third attempts. That's yeah, pretty that, impressive. That is very impressive. That's that's statistically stellar. Yes. So yeah. I roll. Sorry. All right. So I yeah I, I agree with you then. And she doesn't like yeah she doesn't have the best deadlift. She doesn't have the highest deadlift in her class, but she has the most based on that i didn't actually look at her numbers but based well, on that, usually she's so far ahead of everybody because of her bench press yeah that she gets to a position where she can pull for third and if she a lot of times when she needs it she'll do stuff that i would have 
been staggered at. Yeah. True. Cool. Good pick. I like it. Yeah. Great deadlifts there. All right, Josh. All right. You guys ready for this? Okay. I'm going to start with three lifters that I am not choosing. And I'm going to tell you why. And I thought what the question was. I know, but I'm going to tell you who I choose also. Okay. But these, these are the, these were the ones that I was going to go with just off of a hunch, but then I actually did some research. So, um, who I, my first top of my head, my first choice was going to be Lamar Gant, the greatest deadlifter ever. Um, I did not choose him because I got onto open powerlifting and started looking up at meat results. And based on the results that showed all three attempts, there were some older results that just showed their best lifts and not if they made their second, third attempt, whatever. Um, but of the ones that, so there were 33 results that had, um, all of the attempts and out of those 33, 21 of those meets, he missed his third deadlift. So, and know Mark has an, arg uh, an argument here and, and I agree with him. Um, so just, just based off of that, I felt like he misses more thirds than he, he makes. So that would be a little bit, it'd make me a little bit uncomfortable betting my life savings on that. Um, Mark, you want to share your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I just figured he was probably so far ahead of everybody that he was probably going for his own world record every year and probably just missed a bunch because of that. And then you also said there were a lot of meets where he didn't even register a third. Yeah. I think there was like three first or second. And then, yeah, there were three or four meets where he didn't even attempt a third, but that, but I'm counting that as a, as a not making a third deadlift. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, he's never really been pushed. So in this situation, he's being pushed and he's, he's down by 10, um, which he's never really been in that situation except for like, you know, very early years. So I don't know. I, yeah. So I'm not picking him. Um, another person I'm not picking. Um, and this one, this one hurt because I really wanted to pick this one. Uh, Dave Ricks. Um, looking at his results. So he, he, he's, I have mixed feelings on this one. Because looking at open powerlifting, um, there were 69 meets that he had full results on. 29 of those 69, he missed his third deadlift. So that's 42% of the time he missed. Now, the interesting thing with Dave is I've seen him miss his first and second go up and make his third to win. Mm -hmm. so, the, so just looking at the numbers, it's hard to pick him. But knowing the knowing like I guess the how he kind of steps it up for the big moments kind of makes me a little bit torn because even though if you look at the math statistically probably not the best choice but if you have anybody that's gonna that's gonna rise to the occasion it's gonna be him so I'm not picking him but that but I have mixed feelings on not picking him any any input on on that one from anybody mm. yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't pick Rick's for that yeah i've seen him miss too many times in the gym and uh, i'm not risking my life savings on him making any lift <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um another one that i that i wanted to pick but i didn't uh priscilla ribic um 31 out of 50 of the meat results she missed her third deadlift um, which is 62 percent of the time so that's a lot, but again, I think she kind of falls into the same category as Lamar, um, where she most of the time hasn't really been pushed. So, you know, she wins it on her first or second, and then the third one is just sw swinging for the fences for a world record or whatever. Um, and, I, and I will say that I'm a fan of that style of lifting more so than so, – so I, I'm not picking them for my to bet on my life savings, but if I have to pick, I guess, the mentality and, and the – the approach of, of lifting, like I would pick those, those three, um, because they're not, they're not afraid to miss, they're not afraid to go for it and miss. Mm -hmm. and, and I think so many people get too caught up and I have to make these attempts. Well, you know, we can all go nine for nine if we're, you know, maxing out at 80% of our, our true max. Yeah. So anyway, so my pick, uh, if the life savings is on the line is actually Brad Gillingham. Um, and all of these lifters are good deadlifters. And that was a little bit of a little bit of the the trickiness of the question, I guess, is 
you don't have to necessarily have the best deadlift. It's who's going to make their third deadlift to win. Um, you know, if you don't have the best deadlift, somebody could be pulling after you, of course, but you know, who's going to, who's going to come through when it matters. And Brad actually did have the best deadlift most of the time. Um, but according to open powerlifting, uh, he only missed his third deadlift 13 out of 57 times, um, which is only 23% of the time he missed his third. So, and the other thing with Brad is he wasn't, he wasn't winning by such a long shot, like some of these other lifters, like he was always, there was always somebody that if he slipped up could, could beat him. Yeah. Um, which I think also kind of adds to the reliability of it that, you know, in those moments where he had to have his a game, he, he did and, and won. So he has so, like uh, over a hundred, 800 pound pulls or something. Yeah. He, he's had an 800 pound pull and over a hundred different meets. Yeah. And he pulled 400 in South Africa. Is that his best ever or. Uh, eight, I think, yeah, 881, 400, I think that's his best pull ever. Um, and he was probably like mid forties then. Yeah. Yeah. And he was in, yeah, he was early mid forties, something like that. Yeah. So he's been doing this for a super long time. I mean, those results go way back uh, for him, but, but if, if the money's on the line and, and I got to have a, a re reliable third pull, I'm going with Brad Gillingham. All right. So just a counter argument. Okay. Go to the Arnold deadlift meet and uh, hadn't Ian Bell beat him a few times? Ian Bell did beat him a few times, um, both pound for pound and uh, heaviest deadlift. But the, the difference with that is that's a deadlift only meet. I know this is a deadlift question. So yeah, you're making a good argument, but um, in the full meets in the third, the third pull, he's pretty, pretty much, yeah. pretty much money was there some suggestion that someone should take deadlifting out of powerlifting competitions some jackass some said that ludicrous what who why make the meat more exciting you know someone who doesn't like deadlifts <laughs> yeah <laughs> always have been and always will be a terrible deadlifter well with that attitude <laughs> <laughs> poverty lift Probably. I hate that saying. I hate that saying. Work on yeah. it. I mean. So I think I think that was an interesting discussion. There's a lot of a lot of different people uh, on our on the Team Roar Instagram that commented their pick, and most most just picked like the really really good deadlifters, um, which you know naturally that's kind of the way I lean too. But you know the the idea with the question was who's going to be the most reliable making their third regardless if that's your best or worst lift. So um, anyway, I'm going with Brad Gilly Gillingham. I'm sticking with it. And uh, if you guys have a problem with it, that's tough. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's Josh's podcast and he'll just Josh's walk away. Podcast. So what were some of the um, kind of other popular picks from, from other people? Uh, I'll look it up. Laura, you want to move on to the new lifter tip? All right. <laughs> While Josh looks that up, we'll move on to the new lifter tip. Uh, tip of the week, wearing legal underwear to weigh-ins. Who knew? You have to wear underwear to weigh-ins. Mark, you can't go commando during yeah, weigh-ins. No, you can. You can. I, I just, okay. You're just being ironic. I was just being ironic. You can be commando. To so the way I worded. I have done that myself. The way I worded the question wasn't very good because I, I meant to word it to imply that if you're wearing underwear, you have to wear legal underwear, which is true, but you're also, you can weigh in nude. Yes. So you can weigh in nude and every, when every ounce counts, weigh in nude, but wear the legal underwear so that you're getting the right measurement. Because if you step up and you've got those tidy whities that um, have legs though. I think yeah. the, the um, whole principle on that rule, Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, back in the, when everybody was equipped, you know, they make the, the Inzer used to have the little briefs that were, you know, briefs. Yeah, into, supportive. You know, they made it in the rule book where you, you know, you had to wear cotton or, or whatever, and it couldn't be a synthetic material just to keep the, the briefs out. Yeah. And we're actually now allowed to, I mean, you've been away for a few years, I guess, but you're actually allowed to wear boxers now. Um, legs, as, 
yeah crazy. As, lo- as long as they're not like like boxer briefs kind of have the long legs and they're kind of more restrictive you can't wear those um, basically anything that could be argued is is compression or supportive you can't wear yeah so but yeah that was kind of the idea it was just to kind of keep it keep it from um and some of the old some of the older lifters that i've talked to um i, I guess i can't really follow up with the name now because that was a little bit of a old old comment but um i've said that a lot of it was for safety um just wearing the like the tidy whities kind of kept everything kept you kept kept your junk in place so <laughs> you didn't get it caught in your suit <laughs> Well, and then um, I've had a couple lifters that, you know, didn't come in with the right underwear. So they'd be like, well, I can just lift without underwear, right? No. Yeah. Don't lift without yeah, underwear. You can't lift without underwear, but you can you, weigh in without you underwear. You can't go commando. All right. So uh, I'm going to go through the list of what some of the people commented. So we had Kim Walford. Uh, a couple people commented. Stacy Burr actually said Kim Walford. And I think Stacy Burr would actually be a good candidate for for being the person you'd bet on too. Um, Priscilla Ribic, Ian Bell. Yeah, Steve, Ian, Ian yeah, Ian. Yeah, Ian. Well, so I looked up Ian, Ian too. Uh, Ian actually missed like 75% of his third pulls. Um, but again, he's in that situation where his deadlift is so big that he's pretty much got it wrapped up after the second. In the U.S. though, I mean, he... he in the U.S., yeah, in yeah. US, but at Worlds, you know, he's kind of in that third make the podium don't make the podium tier and he probably did chase some guys and try to pull some big some big deadlifts and, and maybe miss some too all right uh all right going down the list so who did i say last ian yeah uh steve goggins uh, another one for priscilla uh tay says eddie Cohn. yeah um austin perkins yeah that's a good pick too lamar gantz uh, we had another Ed Cohn, Eddie Hall, <laughs> um, not a power lifter, but okay. I can see where you're going there. Charles Akpoko, uh, he would be another. Gone now? Is he gone from Powerlifting or is he still Powerlifting? Think... You know, I had saw something that he might have had a small injury or something and was maybe just taking some time. I don't know if he's still training or not. I actually, I don't really know Charles, um, so I might be spreading rumors here, but I, I think that's. I think that's what I saw is he was just taking a little bit of time to kind of get healed up and, and healthy again. Um, we got Maria. I can't, I can never say her last name. H T E E uh, from Canada. Yeah. 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 Um, she's a, she's a super lifter. Uh, um, really good lifter. Uh, what about about, who? The, the Polish dude where Bicky. Um, somebody, uh, I missed a few comments. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be a good, a good one. Somebody said Botsy from Louisiana, Yeah, Garrett Botsy Bailey. Um, yeah, I think those are all, I mean, you, it's hard to argue against any of those. Yeah. I mean, they're all, they're all really good deadlifters, but I don't know. For don't sake of life savings. For yeah. Sake don't of argument, for sake of argument. For sake of argument. Yeah. So, all right. Laura Sturm, we're going through your list of top five lifting songs. We're up, we did five, four, three. We're on number two. What do you number got? Number two, number two. Um, so this would be a song that I start getting um, associated with like deadlifts. Like it's go time, getting on the heavier deadlifts. Sulfur by Slipknot. Got to have some Slipknot in there. Yep. Because I'm a big Slipknot fan. Mark, what's some of your lifting songs? Um, back in the day, it was when I was training at Quest with Josh, we had like three or four songs that would basically just be on repeat and, uh, Eminem till I collapse was probably mm-hmm. the one I played the most. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was on all the time. And then what was Brooks's, uh, throw it up. Yeah. Throw it yeah. up. He listened to throw it up all the time. That was a good one too. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't like those two songs, then, uh, yeah you, you couldn't train there because they were played all the time <laughs> and you didn't love america and you didn't love america yeah. exactly so, cool be done well thanks for ha- for coming on mark yeah, for sure guys that's awesome I'm one of your five uh, weekly listeners yeah no yeah so mark is mark's the one that so the podcast basically gets posted at i don't know something like 
7 a.m. or something every Friday. And usually about 8 a.m. every Friday morning, I'm getting a text from Mark like, hey, you said this wrong. This was wrong. <laughs> you should have said this. I, I disagree with what you said about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I, had, I had, had to bring you on so you can make I your get, case for get the notifications that it's on. And I'm in I'm in my truck all the time. And uh, I just podcast. Yeah. When, when that when this one comes on, I, I turn tune to it and uh, and I listen. So it's been what, good so far. Yeah, well, Alicia's, we appreciate it. Alicia's one was good. Yeah. Or Alicia, sorry. Alicia, yeah. yeah. What uh, just just for curiosity's sake, what are like two other powerlifting related podcasts you listen to? I only listen to one other one. I listen to uh, the Spicy PL Pod. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. If yeah. you get so, yeah. if anybody, what are some other ones? I'll tune in. Uh, you know, that's really the only other one I listen to. Also, I, I don't know. I, I so I started. I started listening to, I, I, I started listening to another one. I was actually a guest on it uh, a while back, but I never listened to it. I started listening to it recently and I, I don't agree with a lot of it. So I quit listening, um, but I'm not going to say the name of it because uh, yeah, it, it <laughs> Yes, All right, yeah, moving yeah. on. So, a Spicy <laughs> PL podcast. I, I, I like. What it is. Yeah, I, I'll tell you privately. All right. Spicy PL podcast. I like that one a lot. Those guys up there are doing yeah. doing some good stuff. Well, thanks for being a loyal listener, Mark. For sure. And maybe we should have another segment where we ask another uh, listener to just come on. Yeah. Maybe yeah, well, a little contest if, like if we, comment if, now. If we can find the other one, we'll get them. We'll bring them on. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe have like a, um, but if anybody will do it, like some questions and y'all just answer the questions too. Rapid yeah. fire. Rapid fire. That'd be good. Yeah. Cool. All right, Mark. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, PL Ballads Podcast, and shoot us an email if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or topics you want us to discuss at plballadspodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Later. Later. See you next week. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.